Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Amy Balliet. I'm the co-founder and chief Swiss Army knife of Killer Infographics. Uh, chief Swiss Army knife, it means just like a Swiss Army knife, I do a little bit of everything. So that gives you kind of an idea. Um, Killer Infographics has been around for three years. In the past three years, we've designed over 3,000 infographics, motion graphics, and interactive designs. We're actually going to end this year with about 1,054 projects completed. Um, we have 250 clients around the world, um, including a number of great Fortune 500 companies. But the reason I'm here today is to tell you two stories. One, why infographics are really awesome, but two, how we got here, because it's kind of not exactly what I ever expected. If you would have asked me three years ago where I'd be today, I would not have said running a design agency because I'm a marketer. I'm not a designer. Um, in fact, I would actually say that I'd still be running this little company, Zippy Cart. But I ended up doing a bit of a pivot about a year into my company, and killer infographics ha happened. Woo! So let me explain this pivot. In 2009, my business partner and I bought ZippyCart.com for $750. Isn't it an awesome looking website? It's beautiful. Uh, $750, this is the only investment I have ever made in my company. We have grown entirely off of revenue since then. Uh, three weeks after we bought this website, which we paid $750 for because it was a page rank four website and my background's in SEO, we turned it into an e-commerce comparison site and spent our nights and weekends working on this for a year. Over the course of that year, we brought it to $4,000 a month in revenue, which we thought was enough to quit our day jobs um, and start working full time. Um, considering $4,000 didn't cover our mortgages combined, I don't know why we decided to do this. But a couple of weeks into being full time, I created two of the worst infographics that have ever been online. And this is actually true. Google worst infographics ever, and you'll get these two infographics. I'm not even kidding you. But this was, at this point, we're in 2010, and in 2010, infographics are just kind of starting to become a big deal, okay? And so somehow, these two pieces of shit went viral. Um, so my shit turned into gold. Um, <laughs> So basically, these guys went viral and people started asking us to do infographic designs for them. So I had some friends who were actual designers who needed work, and that's when Killer Infographics was born. That was three years ago. Our first quarter, we did 14 designs. Our first month of our second quarter, we did 40 designs. Now we do about 100 designs a month, whether it be an interactive infographic, an animated motion graphic, or a static infographic. And we've actually also grown into a pretty cool team. Um, we're awesome, see? Um, but one of the reasons we've been able to grow so much on just a $750 investment isn't just because Seattle is filled with some of the best designers and talent pool that there is, and so we were lucky to actually build this team. But it's also because visual information is the wave of the future. And so I want to test you guys out on something. When I say the word dog, what pops into your head? <laughs> A cat. Well, either way, is it this? Is it the letters D, O, and G? No. It's probably this. That's my dog. Um, if we don't think in text, why should you consume information in text? We are a visual community. We think visually. And if you don't believe me, think about this. The visual part of your brain transmits information 60,000 times faster than any other part of your brain. That means that you'll take in visuals 60,000 times faster than text or than me even talking to you right now. And 90% of the information that you're going to retain tonight is what was presented to you visually, not what I said to you, and not what you've ever read in text. Visual information is the quickest way to get your message across to an audience. And let's talk about that audience. The average attention span of any consumer today is eight seconds long. 
That means that today, people will spend eight seconds judging a book by its cover, meaning they're going to look at that book, decide if they want to crack it open and read it, and then maybe eight seconds reading a page to decide if they want to read more. Now, let me put that into some perspective for you. The average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. <laughs> so right now, everybody out here has less of an attention span than a small little thing swimming in a bowl. And that's just sad. So wouldn't you want to use the method of delivery that is 60,000 times faster than text? And this is where infographics come in. When you package your message in a beautiful visual representation, you have a 60,000 times better chance of getting that message to your audience and a 90% higher chance of that audience actually remembering what you have to say. And it's because of this that infographics are becoming the best way to deliver a message and build a brand today. Let me actually restate that. It's because of this that well-designed infographics are the best way to get your message across to an audience, because there's a lot of crap out there. But luckily, I get to say three years later that I'm running a company that produces extremely high-quality infographic designs. So it's a lot better than Zippy Cart. Thank you. Questions? Yep. Um, I understand that you know visually will will process sixty thousand times faster, but your infographics tend to have a lot of text on them. So how do you kind of how do you balance those things out? It really depends on how much text there is. So studies show that if there's more than 563 words of text, 77% of people won't pay any attention to it. But if it's less than 563 words of text and that there's a lot of visuals that tell the story, then it has a lot better chance of succeeding. And this is why there are quite a lot of infographics out there that really, really do suck. Um, we really focus on making sure that we keep all of the text as short as possible and that if you were to change the language on the infographic, it would still make sense because of the visuals. And that's the really, thing, the really important thing to note. If the visuals still tell the story, then you're succeeding with an infographic. Um, for those who didn't hear, he asked, how important are the numbers versus the visuals versus the text? The text is the least important that there is, in my opinion. Um, the numbers, it really depends on whether your infographic is pure data visualization or if your infographic is visualizing a theory or an idea. For instance, um, Silicon Valley Geeks versus Seattle Geeks, which is an infographic we did for GeekWire, there's absolutely no numbers with this. This is very much visualizing an idea. Um, and so numbers aren't necessarily important. It really de definitely depends on what your end goal is. If you're trying to educate the audience on a specific set of data, then the numbers should be the most important. But you should always be visualizing those numbers as opposed to relying on just writing those numbers really large. Um, because that's still a reading assignment for people. And the whole point of an infographic is to take away the reading assignment. Amy, our infographic still effective SEO bait or is that golden era over with? Um, in my opinion, it's not that the golden era is over with, it's that I think the focus of an infographic, if you're doing it for online marketing, should be shareability. It shouldn't be backlinks anymore. Um, infographics used to be great link bait. Those two horrible infographics of mine that I showed you um, combined have over 5,000 backlinks, which is just sad. Um, but because infographics are such link, or were such link bait, people started putting out some really low quality infographics to try and get backlinks. Um, at this point, you should really focus on an infographic that will be picked up by a great publication and get a lot of shares. It's a great way to build a brand. It's a great way to build social media presence. Um, and it's an amazing tool for offline use as well. So last question. Yeah, it sounds like you guys uh, are scaling pretty quickly each month. I'm just curious, how, you, how do you guys scale to those numbers? Are you just adding employees or like what's... 
So we originally scaled by adding employees. In fact, our office, which um, is located in the heart of Fremont, uh, above a taco truck and above a head shop and across from a medical marijuana dispensary, which is just really weird. Um, our office is our fifth office that we have been in in two years. Um, and now we're three, years, we're three years old. It's the first office we've spent a year in because we just kept growing. Now we're not necessarily focusing on scaling based on projects. Instead, we are kind of shifting with the times. Um, animated infographics and motion graphics and interactive infographics are really where the infographic space is going. And so we're focusing more on building that part of our business um, and lowering our project, our amount of projects per month, if at all possible. We, we've been trying to, but we just haven't been able to yet. So. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, killer infographics. Great presentation.